Hey, you guys. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh, my goodness. It's been a while. Uh, I don't know. I've just, I know. It. <laughs> I've been sidetracked. I've been completely sidetracked. A uh, couple things real quick. Um, we got books. Me and uh, Sebastian, or Sebastian and I, excuse me, we got books. So that's really cool. Uh, I was able to get my hands on, oh, a little more than 120, I think, Reader's Digest. So that was really cool. And um, a whole bunch of other a whole bunch of other really cool books. So I, um, Sebastian and I, Sebastian is my number four son. Um, he is the, the one I have left. He's the only one I have left at home. Um, he uh, has opened an Etsy shop. And for the time being, he's just going to be doing the books. So books that, you know, I would normally be doing in book sales. Um <clears throat> he's going to be doing those through his Etsy shop. So that's really cool be, in a, a lot of ways because, well, first of all, it, you know, benefits him, benefits me because I can still get books that I want to use through my source. And it benefits you guys too because they're just right there on Etsy. And I'm helping him with pricing and that kind of stuff. Um, m much of the description on the books uh, in all of his listings is going to be very generic, you know, not a lot of details about publications and all that stuff, you know, <clears throat> because he's, you know, he doesn't know a whole lot about books, but I'm helping him. And so, you know, he's not going to have like all of the copyright information and all of that in the description. You know, if that's something you want to know about a particular title, then you can just, you know, maybe look it up on wherever. Um, so anyway, I just want you to know the descriptions are going to be very uh, short and to the point and really, you know, he, he'll sell them to anybody, obviously, but um, they're really kind of geared towards my little tribe, you know what I mean? Like the, or our tribe, I should say, it's not my tribe, but um, towards, towards our tribe, our junk journalers and that kind of stuff and, you know, people that are into that kind of stuff. So lots of uh, really old vintage books and then some newer books too that, you know, um, I thought, you know, you guys might be interested in and, and he wants to try to give them a shot. So like I said, I'm helping him with pricing. If you find yourself wanting to order multiple books and you feel like the shipping charges are way out of line, um, just go ahead and, you know, I would recommend just make the purchase anyway, if you can, you know, make the purchase. And then what he's doing is he's just doing, um, like a, like a partial refund on the shipping because we're trying to figure out an easy way to get the multiple item purchase things set up on Etsy. And it's kind of confusing and it's really complicated. So, you know, just be aware of that, that, the, that your shipping charges might be a little high, but he will make an adjustment. And, and most of the books are going to ship out media mail, even though media mail is not an option for you to choose as a customer on uh, Etsy. That's the way he's going to sh be shipping the books, unless you request a different shipping method. So if you request that they get shipped out priority, then expect the, the shipping costs to be higher because obviously that's it's higher you know but anyway I just wanted to let you guys know about that so he should be getting some new books listed um hopefully over the weekend and uh yeah so okay so um I've just been on this thing of like reorganizing my whole entire house and since Sammy moved out um I, th I said this on the last video which was like what 10 days ago um I'm trying to move a lot of my excess like crafty stuff and and now all of the book stuff into his empty bedroom because he's apparently not moving back in so I we get to use his room and I got his permission so um, Sebastian and I are going to share that room for shipping and for storing books and things like that and um, yeah so that's pretty cool and I've just been on this kick of like I've been on this really long windy YouTube road of watching all of these women doing 
like freezer meals and stuff and like preparing all these meals that you can just store in the freezer and then just throw in the car in the crock pot or into your pressure cooker or whatever or in the oven and i've just been super inspired since now i actually have a sink and a working kitchen and i don't have to go to the laundry room to wash my hands I can do everything I want in my kitchen, which is really, really nice. It's been 10 years coming to be able to do that. So I've just been on this cooking thing lately and groceries. And anyway, so I've been doing that and it's kind of fun. If any of you guys would like to see what I've done to my living space, because I did, I have shown it before, um, just leave that in the comments and I'd be happy to make a short video and just kind of give you guys a, a quick run through of what I've actually done in here because I think it's pretty cool. It's almost like a tiny house kind of vibe. So anyway, uh, so, well, it's only six minutes in and, I ha and I've not rambled too long. Okay, so journals. Oh my God. All right, so I have struggled and I said this before. I have just been going around and around and around and around with these book covers really, really have wanted to make them into journals and I've been stuck on what to do with them and how to create something that I like, you know? So you guys saw in the last video, I did some collaging on the front of them. Some people were like, oh my God, how could you collage over that beautiful, you know, marbling and stuff, but I just wanted to alter them and I wanted to do something you know, kind of different on the covers. And I usually don't decorate covers anymore or embellish covers. And I've kind of gotten back into liking that. So, um, so I just really wanted to do that. So I have done that with eight of these covers. And <clears throat> so now, um, so then I was like, okay, I've got to make some kind of spine on these. And I just seriously, I, like, I tried three or four different ways of doing this, even after the other times that I was trying to make spines on these covers. And I just decided, okay, even though I hate making ring bound journals, that's what I'm going to do with these. And I'm actually kind of excited about it this time because I just think it's the best option for these covers. And I haven't made ring bound journals for quite a while. I think the last series I did were the book house books. Um, and I think I can manage it. <laughs> um, and part of the reason that I'm super excited is because I've just got so much stuff that I've had in these bins that really lend themselves to a ring bound format, you know, um, I, I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm that I'm talking about, um, but you know, making ring bound journals is a really great way to use up just kind of odds and ends and like you know um, scraps kind of of you know things that you've trimmed off or smaller pieces of paper that you know maybe you just don't know what else to do with. Don't throw that stuff away. Just just hang on to it. Sock it away somewhere. And, you know, maybe do a ring bound journal sometime if you've never done one. Um, I'm going to do eight of them at least. I might do some of the larger covers that I showed you guys before. I'll show you what I've done with those uh, in the meantime. And a lot of you guys are going to go, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. But <clears throat> I just really wanted to alter them. So what I did was I actually used some of that... Um, that tissue it's it's kind of like onion skin paper um i can't find it where'd it go here it is it's from this this book that i got from louise and it's this copy book so these are letters that have been written by hand and then um you know it's like it's a copy of the letter. So they put a piece of that, whatever you call that stuff. I, I don't think it was graphite paper, but I can't remember what it's called. But it's like pink. And then when you write on it, you put your sheet of paper over this. Uh, you put your sheet of paper down. You put a piece of this stuff in between. And then it copies whatever you write onto a page in the book, right? 
So I've got this whole book of this paper with these really beautiful, grungy, um, you know, writings. So, so that's what I've used on these, uh, on these covers. So these were also marbled, um, a little bit different pattern than this. Um, but I just glued a piece of that over the cover and I just thought it looks, I thought it looked pretty cool. And then I did some mineral oil on it also. I am going to spray these and seal them, um, just to be sure that everything stays put. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to just leave them kind of grungy and, um, I'll probably wind up doing something on the inside of this where I act where I actually had done the spines before and I wound up tearing that off. Um, and then these were some of the red marbled covers. So I'll leave the inside like this. I'll probably do something along here, but I just, I don't know. So I wrinkled the, the pages up before I glued them down on these. And, um, I just thought that turned out really cool. And I'll probably do another coat of, um, of the mineral oil on here. And the reason I did the mineral oil is to make it more transparent. It makes the paper that I glued on there more transparent. So, so that you can kind of see the marbling underneath. Okay. Um, so I did a couple of those and then I've still got these guys that I'm going to do somehow. I still don't know exactly, but they will also probably wind up being ring bound journals. So yeah, so I'm not working on these actively. I just kind of have these, this little stack of covers set aside for a future project, but I'm going to be doing these. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is some of them were sort of, um, this part, like the leather that's on the cover right here. When, when I ripped the previous binding off, these ones I hadn't done it on, but on like three or four of them, when I did the, the other, the other, you know, like spine that I had made on these, when I ripped it off, this leather part tore off. So it was just the, the bare like book board, you know, um, kind of like, kind of like how this one is, you know? So, so on, on the ones that were like that, um, I just took some, I took some of the some of that tissue paper and I just glued it onto some lightweight craft paper and then I just glued a strip of it down that edge. Okay. And, um, you know, just where I needed to, you know, these, I am going to spray and I am going to coat them to seal them. So I'm, I can't really show you guys actually the, you know, my process of doing that, but really it's just, you know, spray painting <laughs> and because I have to do it out in the garage and, you know, anyway, so I've done that on some of these. I've just glued a strip down the front. I need to do the back on this one. And um, so I thought, you know, we could just kind of look at what I'm doing with these and um, part of my part of my process. So this one I need to do the strip on the back and I'm just gonna just I'm just using these kind of random pieces and I'm just gonna cut actually I want to use this side so I'm gonna try to cut this super straight with my scissors and I'm just gonna glue that on the back like that. I had gotten a brand new giant bottle of um, the art glitter glue and I was going to refill my smaller bottle but that bottle I've left the lid off of it so many times that it just has a bunch of like little chunks in it <laughs> so I, I just, I don't know, I didn't feel like fighting with it anymore, and I figured I'll probably wind up using all of this anyway, so I just put the lid on on this bottle. 
put the, the metal cap and cleaned it out really good and um, and I'm a lot happier using it. So you see that it's kind of wrinkly right there. There's a little pieces of it were kind of coming up. That's okay. I'm just going to glue this down. Using a baby wipe just to clean up the excess glue that oozes out. And then I just want to make sure and get this really well glued on the edges. Um, I thought about trying to wrap it around um, onto the inside, but I decided I didn't really want to do that. I just want it, I want it to be kind of raw on the edges because I'm going to ink it. And then also when I spray it, that'll seal it up real nicely. So, so that's basically all I'm doing on these covers. And once this dries, then I can, um, I can remove that excess paper. So this one's already dry. And when I do that, I like to use a piece of sandpaper. This is really coarse sandpaper. And then I just have it glued onto a really old um, emery board. And so I just use that to sand off the extra paper. And let me put the glue back or the cap back on my glue. So just use the sandpaper just to cut that off. Like that and then I can kind of go around and sort of distress that a little bit and then right along this edge where this paper meets um, I'm just going to take just the corner of my sandpaper and sort of distress right along that line just so it doesn't look so harsh, you know, where where this paper meets up with the, the collage. I'm just, just kind of distressing that a little bit with the corner. And using the a little bit of sandpaper also kind of roughs up the surface a little bit so that when you ink it, it'll sort of, you know, adhere better. Like the ink... I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it kind of like sinks into the paper better when you've got a little bit of roughness on there. Okay, so since I've sort of changed up what I'm doing on these, I thought, you know, I should probably show you guys what I'm doing. So then I'm just going to ink. And this is Distress Ink. It's it's a vintage photo. And... um. This is a really, uh, I really need to change this pad on here, but my son actually made this distressing tool for me. Some of you guys have seen him already, and he me for sale. <clears throat> I did at one point, but then he said, yeah, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> And I still ask him every once in a while, but anyway, so like that, and then I'll just take a, a brush, uh, like a makeup brush, and sort of just very lightly add a little bit more ink right along that edge. Maybe make it a little darker here and there, you know. There we go. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do on all of these covers where I've torn that original spine off. Um, <clears throat> I've got a few more I need to do where I just have to, you know, use the sandpaper and then do the distressing. And then, <clears throat> so I'm going to use this... Um, 
hole punch that one of my lovely viewers slash friends slash customers um, sent to me in happy mail right around Christmas time. So it was super sweet last year. Um, and she loves ring bound journals. So <laughs> I think she, I think she was kind of hoping for more ring bound journals to come out of my studio. So, um, anyway, but on the ones where I'm not, um, adding that strip of paper, I just want to leave the leather on there. I am going to actually, you know, sand these a little bit because originally that was going to be covered when I put the new spine on the book. But since I'm not doing that now, I'm just going to kind of distress this edge a little bit. And right on this edge where my collaging meets up with that leather, I'm also going to sort of sand that a little bit and just distress it a tiny bit. Just so it doesn't look so harsh and then i'll wind up inking that a tiny bit also okay so i just want this to be nice and you know kind of smooth I, I don't want i don't want it to be raggedy but i do want it kind of distressed i don't know if that makes any sense but like i don't want these little pieces sticking off i want that gone but I still want it distressed, you know? You know what I'm saying? So I'm making, um, I had to test one of my freezer meal recipes. So I'm doing, I took the, um, I had like four pork chops, like small pork chops. So I cut those into little cubes. And then I took two boneless, skinless chicken breasts and cut them up into cubes. And I'm doing a um, pork and chicken, sweet and sour pork and chicken mixed <laughs> in my crock pot. And it smells really good. If anybody wants the recipe, let me know. Um, anyway, so that's what I'm going to do on the ones where, um, where I'm not covering that with paper. And then I'll just have to, you know, ink this a little bit. And then use the brush to add a little bit of ink right along this, this line. This ink pad, it has, it, it needs to be replaced. <laughs> I need a new distress ink ink pad uh, for vintage photo. Kind of hard to find lately. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? So just kind of wipe down that, just took away that white um, that whiteness. So. Okay. So I like that. I think it just looks really, really cool. Okay. So I'm using that. Um, let me show you. Okay. So this is a, an adjustable three hole punch. It's kind of dusty. Sorry. Um, It's made by Swingline, and it's very, very durable, and it can punch through these book covers no problem. Um, and it can do, I think, up to 30 pages at once. So that's kind of nice, although I don't know if I would be punching 30 pages all at once for a junk journal. I might, because punching of the holes is one of, it's one of my, <clears throat> one of the biggest reasons that I don't like making ring bound journals. And also because I'm not super fond of adding reinforcers to pages, but I can do it. I can do it. Um, so anyway, what I did was, um, there's a little slider here where you can, you can basically mark use that slider to indicate where you want the bottom of your page to be in, in relation to your holes that you're punching. Okay. So since this is adjustable, I don't know if you guys can, well, here, let me take this off. 
take this off. So this comes off and then this little guy catches all of the punched holes. So these are movable, okay? You cannot move them wherever you want on this bar. You can only move them to the locations where these holes are already drilled, okay? So this is where the, that's where the, um, this punch has to come through, you know? Um, so there's a screw on each one of the punches and you can add up to, I think, five more holes on here. Like, I think it'll actually accept that many. So you can do, or no, you can do, I think it's up to seven you can do. I know I got one extra or two extra. I don't know. Cause she, cause I always do the five ring binders or I used to always do the five ring binders, you know, like the better homes and gardens ones and stuff. And those have five rings. So her thinking was that this would work for those binder journals, but it doesn't because the line, the holes just don't line up correctly and you can't, put these wherever you want so um, it works <laughs> it works for like three of the holes but the other two are off and it so it just doesn't work but anyway so if you get one of these I don't remember I didn't buy this for myself so I don't remember how much it costs but um, if I ever did look it up it was like less than fifty dollars um, but anyway so you have to loosen this screw right here and the screw right here and then on the bottom, you also have to um, loosen this screw and take it out. And then, and then you move your little, your little punch to whatever position you want that coincides with these holes. Okay. Um, and then tighten that screw down when you get this in place where you want it. And then you have to put your screw back in on the bottom. Okay. To, to hold it in place. So I just kind of want to show that to you guys really quick because it is kind of nice to be able to um, move your punches to whatever position you want. And the reason that that's important to me right now is because I just want to do two rings on each binder or on each journal. And I want them to be um, somewhat far apart. I don't want them to be super, super close together. Okay. So I want them to be like that, you know, and instead of, you know, like here and here, like, you know, those two hole punches that you can buy. Um, I have one of those, but it won't punch through this book board very well. Like it will, but I'm afraid I'm going to break it if I do it. Um, anyway, so it's just nice that you can, you know, kind of spread those out wherever you want. And then I'll use this, um, to punch the rest of the, the paper that I'm going to add into the journal. Anyway, so I just kind of line this up and use the holes that were already existing to figure out, you know, where I wanted to have my punches and then moved the punches to those corresponding look, um, positions. And then I took my book, my cover, and, well, I put it in this way, I put it in just kind of eyeballed where those are going to actually punch. And then I moved this little slider. I've since, I've, I've stuck it down with masking tape because it does have a tendency to kind of move a little bit on its own. It's not real super tight. Um, so I just kind of taped it down with masking tape so it never moves. And I made that slightly smaller it's about a quarter of an inch shorter than what the cover where the holes correspond on the cover exactly because now I want to use it to punch all my paper right um, and you just kind of have to fiddle with it, it it's kind of hard for me to explain what I'm trying to say but anyways um, I'm gonna punch all the holes for the for the books for the covers once I get them all prepped and ready to go um, I'll have to move this again when I when I go to punch the covers because like I said I've made it a little bit shorter now but I'll use this one that I've already done to kind of line that up again actually wait a second 
No, I haven't moved it. Okay, sorry. Forget I said all that stuff. It is in the right position for the covers. So once I get all the covers done and the holes punched for all the covers, then I'm going to shorten it like about a quarter of an inch so that when I when I go to like punch my paper, whatever I'm going to punch, it won't go all the way to the bottom of the cover. Like it'll still, it'll give me a little bit of a margin. Um, you know, when, like when I punch the holes in this, I can, I'll move this up a little bit so that when I put the paper right up against it, um, the, the location of the holes will make it so that it won't go all the way to the bottom of the cover. It'll be up just a little bit. Okay. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. Okay. So anyway, so, so I'm going to punch all the holes, get all of the covers prepped how I want them, get them all, you know, distressed and all that. And then I'm going to spray them. Actually, no, I'm not going to spray them yet. I'm going to do the holes. Okay. Punch the holes. And then I'm going to do, um, on the ones where I've glued paper on here, I'm going to put some hole reinforcers. I wanted to do this. So this is another reason why I don't really like doing ring bound journals because I really like to use eyelets for the holes on the covers. And even those really, those bigger eyelets that I like to use, even though those ones are bigger, they still have a tendency to restrict the movement of the cover when you put the ring in. And I don't want to have to use big gigantic rings. I like, I want to use two inch rings because they're just, they're like, this is a two and a half inch ring and it's just way too big for this, for this journal. I don't know. I just don't like it. It's a two and a half inch ring. Um, so I want to use a two inch ring. This is a one and a half inch ring and it's just too small. Like I, I can't, I can't get that much stuff in there. You know, I mean, I could only really make the journal that thick, you know, and I want it to be chunkier than that. And I want you to be able to add more stuff to it too. Whoever get, you know, winds up with these, if anybody buys them, just saying. Um, anyway, so I had to order some two inch rings since this one's too small and this one's too big. So <clears throat> I'm waiting for those. They should be here tomorrow anyway. But the problem is that when this hole, <clears throat> when, if this hole is not large enough, it makes it really difficult to, to open the journal. Like it catches on stuff and, and it restricts the, um, it just restricts the movement of the cover um, with the eyelets, if you use eyelets, because it makes the hole smaller, you know, I mean, the hole's fine right now, but if I were to put an eyelet in there, it would make the hole a lot smaller. And then it would just mean that I would have to, I couldn't put as much stuff in the journal. It's just really hard to explain. <laughs> um, I think, I think you guys understand what I'm saying though. So to, I'm, I'm trying to tell you why I'm justifying just doing the hole reinforcers instead of eyelets. First of all, this cover is pretty thick, so I feel like it's going to be pretty sturdy. Um, but I like the look of an eyelet, so I decided, okay, I'm just going to use these like metallic hole reinforcers. And I got these, I did buy these on Amazon, but I've seen them at like Office Depot and stuff, but they're just kind of like metallic colors. So there's some silver and bronze and gold and copper. Okay. So I'm just using those. If you don't have these and you want to do this, you could always just take some regular hole reinforcers and, um, you know, paint them, just paint them with some kind of metallic paint or use Inca gold or even spray paint them. Like, you know, if you have a metallic spray paint or something, um, yeah, or I could use that um, you know, that paste that I like to use that metallic, um, gilding, gilders paste wax or whatever. Anyway, so I'm just going to do hole reinforcers on there. I'll put one on the inside and one on the outside. 
And I think that looks nice. So then this one is actually pretty much ready to get sprayed. And I don't know, I will let you guys know what I wind up doing as far as how many coats I'm going to do. Um, and I'll pay, I'll, I'll make sure and take good notes as to what, what, what works. Okay. Oh, I do need to ink this a little bit more. I'm just using a lot of ink on these because I just want them to be as grungy, vintagey as I can, you know? So anyway, so that's, that's that. So I got to work on all these covers, get these all prepped, make sure I do the front and the back of all of them. There's more that I've already glued the paper on, um, but I need to do some other ones. I need to do the backs on some of them. If I'm going to glue paper on it, I need to glue paper on it and let it dry so I can distress it. Okay. So then I've got this giant pile of other... Oh, so for ringbound journals, I really like to do dividers or like you know, divider pages. And so what I'm going to do is just use up some more file folders. I will cut these to size, making them a quarter inch smaller, um, you know, top to bottom than the cover and also a quarter inch smaller uh, side to side um, to work in there. And I'll probably do, I don't know, I'd like to do I'd like to do five dividers and then, you know, put some tabs and stuff on them, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to work, but, um, so I'll do the dividers. I'll use some of these file folders and I thought I could use some of these too. These ones are a little bit thicker, a little heavier. So I thought these would be nice and I could do like a, make them like make them smooth at least on one side so that, I mean, if I want to do some collaging on them or something, I might do that, but I want to at least make them smooth on one side or the other. So you could use it as a writing board too, if you wanted to, or maybe I'll just make a writing board for each one that could just kind of clip in somewhere. So, and then the other thing I really want to do, I don't know if any of you guys have seen Jibid, Jibid Neary. Um, she did these really cool, little like snap in um it's like a ruler where she did she made it with plastic and then it kind of like snapped in to the um to the journal and I, I don't remember what she had but i think it was a ruler but she used some kind of like um some kind of plastic like this a couple layers of that and then and then she sort of cut it here so that you could just so that you could just snap it onto the ring you know and then you can move it wherever you want in your book i've seen those like in you know notebooks for school and stuff before but um but i was thinking it'd be fun to to do something like that too maybe make something special just like a bookmark type of thing or maybe even make it a pocket that could hold a pen I was thinking it'd be fun to do some flat pens. I've never made any of those flat pens before, and I think those are super cool. So, yeah, so we'll just kind of play around and see what we wind up doing with these uh, with these ring-bound journals that I hate to make, but I think I'm going to try to enjoy it, and I think they're going to be fun this time because I've got this whole huge bin full of all kinds of stuff that, I've made or, you know, cut out like these, like these little uh, postcards, you know, I think these would be great to use in, um, in ring bound journals. And I've got a whole bunch of them that I've made and, you know, use up a bunch of my French um, index cards, you know, that I've already altered and some of these pocket pages that I had done a long time ago. And um, these are just done on like a paper bag. Um, I think I did these on a video. I can't remember. If I haven't and you don't remember seeing these, let me know and I can do a video and show you how I how I did these. Um, yeah, but just all kinds of stuff, you know, like these 
some of these tall pockets and you know you can punch holes right here and here even if it if it's something that opens up you know you can still punch a hole and put that into a ring bound journal um, some envelopes I'd like to do some string closures on some of these altered envelopes and maybe even make more envelopes you know do some more coffee dyeing and tea dyeing and avocado dyeing and stuff um, it's nice for book pages just for you know kind of somewhat fragile book pages I think it's nice to use those sometimes in ring bound journals it, you know just reinforce them somehow along the edge and then you know punch your holes and do some reinforcers so and then of course I've got all of that wallpaper that I just scored a couple weeks ago so that some of that is definitely gonna find its way into these journals and I have I have scanned most of this paper and I'm hoping to get them um, set up into some files where I could do like two or three listings of digitals of this wallpaper because um, I've, I've done a little research on it and 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 it's totally fine to to copy it so so that's that's kind of in the works um, and I have actually scanned them and I've printed some of them off and it prints out pretty nice so the color uh, looks really nice when it reproduces so or when it prints so anyway so that's what I'm gonna do and I've already got so much stuff that I had already cut apart and cut up to use in just regular journals like these are just pages that I have made for Reader's Digest I can easily adapt this for a ring bound journal I don't even have to really cut these pages apart I mean I could still you know like I said just punch the holes and leave this in the journal like that you know so that's what I'm doing with that and then I've got this huge pile of coffee dyed stuff that I did a few weeks ago this is just some really kind of lightweight drawing paper and I left the you know the part where I tore it out of the book left that on there because I think it looks cool and some ledger paper that I coffee dyed and then I've got some other like um, this is other some other drawing paper and I left the edges on that too and then I did do some like mixed media paper I just coffee dyed some mixed media paper and so this is heavier thicker paper so I might use some of this for some of the divider pages too so I've got quite a bit of it I think I have plenty to do eight journals and then you know add some more um, like ledger paper that's not coffee dyed and stuff like that so anyway Lord knows I have plenty of paper excuse me you guys and so yeah I'm kind of excited to, to do these and then I decided that um, as, when I was going through all my my binder rings I realized that I have a ton of the one inch um, the one inch rings because I wanted some bronze binder rings and the only ones I could find on Amazon that would have given me the two inch size that I wanted came in an assortment and the last ones I had that are the inch and a half this is an inch and a half one um, the last inch and a half ones that I had I think I in kits or something I, I don't know what happened to them but I didn't want to buy that assortment again I really didn't like the giant size binder rings that I think I'm gonna make it uh, use for monthly minis for this month so those will actually be um, I'll be billing those tomorrow or today <laughs> Um, since it's almost midnight right now um, on the 15th is when I'm gonna bill those and that is gonna be the last of the subscription 
for for monthly minis. I'm still gonna make monthly minis, but after this month, they're gonna just they're just gonna go into my Etsy shop like I used to do back in the day, and not by subscription. I still am going to do the bundles, which I have been putting together, and it was really cool that we got all those books, and because there was a whole bunch of other ephemera and stuff that you guys haven't seen that's going into the bundles um, that I'm shipping out on Monday. So, yeah, so pretty exciting. And I think what I'm going to do is I think I have enough stuff that I could do. I had a few people that canceled their subscription so uh, for the monthly bundle, and um, which is fine, you know, totally fine. Um, so that left me like three empty spaces or whatever. Um, so if, any, if there's anybody that would like to subscribe, I have one person on my, like, um, waiting list that I need to reach out to and ask her if she wants to get on the subscription list for the monthly bundles. But anyway, so I know I have at least two spots open for the subscription to the monthly bundles. I, I think after this month, this was the last of my three-month trial, um... I think I'm I'm just going to continue doing it on a monthly basis. I was going to say, you know, if you want to pay six months in advance, that's fine. But for me, it just works better to bill it once a month, and then it's just automatic. Although, it's going to go through Etsy now. I'm not going to do it through PayPal. So, every month, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you an email with a link to your listing in my Etsy shop, which is going to take me quite a bit of time to do, but I'm just really trying to get away from PayPal. So going back to Etsy. So anyway, if that didn't confuse you guys enough, um, I think I'm also going to do 10 additional bundles for this month because I just have a bunch of extra stuff. So um, I'll have the, the, you know, 40 minus 3 because I've lost three subscribers for the monthly bundles, and I was doing up to 40 people, so I was doing 40 bundles a month. I can do an additional 10 for this month. So if you would like me to just do a one-time deal on a monthly bundle for, for August, um, send me an email, and I will do that last one through PayPal, and I'll send you an invoice. But you're not committing to a long-term thing. It's just for the, like, August only. So you could say in your email, like, August only surprise junk journal bundle. And they're $35. And then I charge um, $8 for shipping because I do those through priority mail. So anyway, oh, my gosh. I should have just done a whole other video to explain all that. So I hope that makes sense if you're totally confused about what I'm doing, just send me an email and I'll clarify. <laughs> but um, basically, this is the last month for monthly mini journals by subscription. Next month, they will just get listed in my Etsy shop like I used to do back in the day. And of course, I'll put out a video and show them to you and stuff like that. So you can see which, you know, what they look like. <clears throat> and then, but the monthly bundles, I'm going to continue to do on subscription, but I'm going to bill it once a month through Etsy though, not through PayPal. So anyway, and that ha that's because of tax reasons and um, shipping clarifications and things like that. Like it's just way easier to manage on Etsy than PayPal. So, okay, you guys. So I will see how far I can get on these journals and um, I'm, a lot, I'm really motivated now to work on these. So hopefully I will be able to get out some more videos here in the next week and keep you guys posted as to what they're, what they're looking like. Okay. And um, let me know if you want the, the recipe for the sweet and sour um, pork or you can make it with chicken. I did it with both, but it's a real, it's really good. It smells delicious. So anyway, okay. Love you guys. Bye for now. Oh, and if you want to see a video of my, my renovation, <laughs> I would be happy to do that. I'll leave, I would do a video and leave it up just for a little while and then take it down probably. But anyway, okay guys, love you. Bye for now.